What is up guys? NYKF31 here bringing you a Madden 15 video. This is part three, I believe, of my Tampa 2 series. And in this series, well not in this series, in this video, I'm going to go over uh, setting up your depth chart and player roles. In the next video, I'm going to go over under and over fronts and also take you through an online um, ranked game so you can see it in action for yourself and also with my commentary to tell you what I'm doing and why. It's one thing to see a depth chart and to hear why I'm doing something. I think it's very helpful to see it live in action and um, also seeing the adjustments that are being made and why I'm making them and when and what plays I'm calling. So um, I'm going to go over, I intend to do a video like this, uh, Tampa 2 depth charts to cover every team in the league. One for every team in the league. I'm going to talk about four in this video, the Saints, the Cowboys, the Texans, and the Bears. And I'm also going to go over general rules of thumb to follow when setting up your roster. You don't have to set it up exactly the way that I have it. You may have your own personal preference as who you wish to put where, but you must follow the rules as far as player roles or this will not work. <laughs> You'll be sending me messages saying, NYKEA, I'm getting lit up, this isn't working, you don't know what you're talking about, you suck. I don't want those messages. I want you to succeed. I want you to prosper, but you must listen to me. Trust me, I will not steer you wrong. I can give you heaps of testimonials that I've received over the years. I know what I'm doing. So, here we go. Again, I'm going to start with the Saints, and with some teams, you're going to have a lot more flexibility as far as what you can do because the rosters are more talented. Some teams are going to be a little bit more rigid and harder to do, like the, like the damn Cowboys. Oh my gosh. But for teams like the Panthers, the Niners, the Seahawks, you know, if you can't put together a sensible defense with those teams, you might as well just pack up the game and not even bother playing. I mean, those teams are so talented, you can, you can do pretty much anything that you want. So, let's start here with the Saints and some general guidelines and rules as far as being able to play Tampa 2 and what you need. You, first of all, must, 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 must have a front four typical, gen typical, capable <laughs> of generating pressure. You need more than one guy. One guy isn't going to cut it. You need at least two. It can be two defensive ends. It can be a defensive tackle and a defensive end. It can be a, a hybrid player like Vaughn Miller who plays linebacker and drops down to defensive end and nickel and dime sets. I don't care where you get it from. You need to have at least two guys. Otherwise, there's going to be too much time to throw. Holes are going to open up. You're going to get lit up like a Christmas tree. You're going to be looking like the uh, Bucks against the Falcons. And we don't want that. We want you to shut these clowns down. We want you to succeed in your ranked games, in your league games, in your dynasty games, whatever. So, as I mentioned, I base out of 4-3 over and under, or odd. And the way I play it, I play it... I ha Because we don't have the ability to designate a strong side to weak side positions, I designate field and boundary positions and I have my guys substituted which you'll see in the next part of the video to play those roles. I have a boundary defensive end, a field defensive end, I have a boundary outside linebacker and a field outside backer. And I play 4-3 under or odd when the ball's on the right hash, 4-3 over when the ball's on the left. The reason being I generally have my weakest zone coverage backer playing the quote-unquote strong or boundary side. He's my best run plugger usually, but he's usually my, my least um, effective zone coverage guy, so I want him covering the least amount of space. And also, my field side defensive end, I want him to basically eliminate the wide side of the field scramble and also be able to help my weak side backer out as far as being able to contain outside runs. And my boundary defensive end, he's more of a physical run defender, if I can have it be so, than my... Um, speed rushing field side end to help out the middle linebacker, the um, free technique, and the um, quote-unquote strong side backer with run defense, and also give me a pass rush. So Akeem Hicks, he's the left defensive end. He's always going to be my boundary defensive end. 
He's strong enough. Just barely strong enough at 82 strength. He's a decent athlete, 81 acceleration. Not that fast, 63 speed, but an 81 acceleration we can get by with. Okay, awareness. Aware enough to occasionally sniff out that slip screen. Good tackler, good hit power, good pass rusher, 88's good enough. Ideally, you want high 80's at the least for your pass rushers. And he's a good block shatter, good enough block shatter at 84. You want mid 80's and above if you can help it. So he's going to be a good anchor and a good enough pass rusher against most um, offensive tackle matchups that he faces. More often on the right than on the left. The left tackles tend to be uh, more stout uh, pass blockers on average, as we know. My field side defensive end is Cameron Jordan. One of the better pass rushers in the game. 90 strength, 83 acceleration, which is not bad with a 75 speed. Which, which was a tick faster, but that's okay. He's a big man, 287 pounds. So 83 acceleration, 75 speed is good enough. It's pretty good for that size. Good tackler. 95 power moves, one of the higher power move guys that you have in the game. 85 block header, good for those outside runs to the um, wide side. Good pursuit, good play rec. The Saints at defensive tackle. They don't really have my prototype three technique defensive tackle. I'm talking about my Gerald McCoys, my, you know, Ndamukong Suze, guys like that. Um, these two guys, Bunkley and Jenkins, they're strong. They're going to be hard to move. Even if they don't get off the block, they're going to be able to hold their ground and not get impact blocked. They won't get pancaked. And their block shedding is not bad. For Bunkley, it's 83. Jenkins is 87. So, they're going to hold their own. Jenkins especially, he's a man mountain. 87 block shedding combined with 93, 92 strength. You're, you're not going to move him very easily. 93 strength for Bunkley as well, not going to move him easily. Good tacklers. In the case of Jenkins, better hit power, but they're not worth much in pass rush. You see, Bunkley is virtually worthless as a pass rusher. 87 and 43, not 87 and 43, 67 and 43. For pass rush moves, Jenkins 76, 44. So what you could even do as well, if you want to have a stronger three technique, you can move Hicks to Bunkley's spot to get you a three technique defensive tackle that can give you more pass rush, and move Jordan, since he's a good enough run defender, to the uh, boundary side defensive end, and have Junior Gallet here be your speed rusher, 82 speed, 91 acceleration. Good tackler, 95 finesse move, not a stronger run defender, but he gives you a good speed edge rush. You can do that as well. That can work. It'll weaken your linebacker core a little bit, but yeah, you can also do that as well. I like to have Junior Gallette be my hammer for my um, boundary side backer. A2 speed, nice and athletic, not as strong as I would like. He's got good acceleration with all along that speed, good awareness. Good tackling, good hit power, good pass rusher. So he's going to drop down for me to defensive end in my dime, my uh, big nickel and big dime, and my quarter and dollar sets. What I like to do is I would have him play the defensive end and have Hicks play the uh, defensive tackle in those situations to get me the uh, pass rusher I need. And I have, I have three strong pass rushers then in those sets with 295 power, um, power moves, 295 pass rush moves, and an 88 when I go three down linemen. And 79 block shed, again, it's borderline. You know, high 70s to low 80s is borderline. I want to be 80 and above. But he's going to be helped out pretty nicely by um, the guys around him. Bunkley and, you know, Curtis Lawton is a good linebacker in pursuit. 78 speed is borderline for that Tampa 2 style. You want high 70s to low 80s at the bare minimum. 84 acceleration makes up for a little bit. 91 acceleration, 91 awareness rather, really makes up for it. He's going to be in the right spot more often than not. He's not going to do too many dumb things. Tackling 85, hit power 85. Botch heading is average, but again, he has these two bodies that are hard to move in front of him. 
I'm not going to get pancaked to leave him exposed very often. Good acceleration, excellent awareness. And hit power, block shedding, play recognition, as we mentioned, and pursuit at 86 with 74 of zone code. You want 70 and above. The higher the better, obviously, but you want 70 and above. So, again, the big thing you need is that pass rush out of your front four. You also need linebackers that can really run and really hit and zone cover. You're okay with passes being caught underneath, but you want a price to be paid. And that price is paid in the form of hits that knock balls loose that can cause INTs off of the deflection and fumbles over the middle. And, it's, and of course, INTs, and then they try to uh, fit the ball in the tight spots. And also to distort looks in coverage and force people to throw the ball into deep downfield coverage against good safeties. And the Saints have really good safeties. Really good safeties. And who you use or control is up to you. I mean, you can use your control, a defensive lineman if you wish. Whoever you're comfortable using. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not a good player if you're using a defensive lineman. If that's the case, fine. You should never lose to someone who is using a defensive lineman then, ever. If you believe that's to be the case. You know, if you feel comfortable using a linebacker, go ahead and knock yourself out. I would recommend controlling either the right or left outside backer unless you're really discippled and you use control over the middle. Kyle Knox, he plays my field side linebacker, or quote unquote weak side backer, the Derek Brooks role. The field side backer, he has a ton of space to cover, so he has to be able to run, as well as zone cover. 84 speed is just what you need. And really, Fort and Knox are close to interchangeable. Fort is stronger and has better acceleration, but not quite as fast. Awareness issues with both of them, so if you want a user or a backer, you may want a user, one of those two, because they will do some boneheaded things from time to time. You know, they're rookies and a second year part time player, so keep that in mind. You know, Knox is a slightly better tackler, Fort has the higher hit power, and he also has the higher block shedding, but I like Knox. I settled on Knox because of his pursuit at 84 and 75 zone coverage, but they're pretty close to interchangeable. Your corners in your Tampa 2 have to be physical. They have to be able to play run support in cover too hard. They're going to be your force players, and the Saints corners fit that profile pretty nicely. Keenan Lewis has 71 tackling, 71 hit power. Corey White has 81 hit power. That's excellent for a corner. You know, decent pursuers. You know, White isn't as aware as Keenan Lewis. I can get by with their man coverage. Again, physicality, good press. And I'll go into coverage audibles and man coverage in another video. But what you can do, for example, you have four guys who can play press coverage, but one who can't. So what you can do is you can use an underneath coverage audible that will have the corners... You can use an underneath coverage audible combined with press coverage. You can call press coverage and then use the coverage audible to play underneath. And that will have them bail like the disguise cushion feature of last year. But you can also combine that with individual coverage audibles. Like for example, you can press them all up. You can use underneath to have them bail. But, you, but from there, you can also assign the three guys or the four guys who can press to still press. So you'll have four guys pressing and one guy bailing. Like in this case, I would want Corey White to be the guy bailing and the other four impress. You can do that. And also in quarters, Kenny Vaccaro is going to drop down to a slot defensive back and he can play man press as well. So you have a lot of flexibility with these safeties. He can knock you out too. A 92 hit power. And he's got good zone coverage. Zone coverage is at 82. 83 press, 83 uh, man, and Jarius Bird. He's, 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 I believe, the best zone coverage uh, safety in the game. 983 acceleration, 93 agility, 84 awareness. Fast enough. You know, not the strongest hitter in the world. That's okay. He can tackle. He can play a little bit of man coverage as well. 89 play rec. He can press, so you can put him at the line of scrimmage as well in some sets. Sub him out. 
or set him into a slot role and have him jam the hell out of somebody. 98 zone coverage. And when you put Vaccaro or have Vaccaro playing in the big nickel as a um, slot corner, uh, Raphael Bush will go to the um, strong safety spot, and he's got 90 hit power to go along with zone coverage in the high 70s. So a lot of scheme flexibility and diversity here with the Saints safeties. And that's how I would set them up to play a Tampa 2 style. The Houston Texans. This group can be an absolute wrecking crew. This is a really, really fun group. Open side end, Jadavian Clowney, Ricky Sapp, pass rush specialist extraordinaire, Whitney Merciless. In big nickel, not big nickel, I keep on saying big nickel. In big dime, I use Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook. Sapp will play a defensive end, a defensive tackle spot opposite, not opposite, but next to Clowney. And next to, as well, J.J. Watt, who plays the three technique. He's the prototypical three technique defensive tackle. You don't need a man mountain in that defensive tackle spot. You need Ndamukong Sue, you need Gerald McCoy, you need a guy like that. And he's a force here. He's, an, he's unblockable. 99 overall, 78 speed, 97 strength, 91 acceleration, 88 awareness. He has 74 catching. which helps because he can play zone coverage. You can drop him into those um, short hooks and spies in, a, in the Tampa 2 drop, and he will catch the ball. I mean, he's, he's sick. 85 play rec, 96 pursuit, 97 block shed, 99 power move. He's gonna be one-on-one -on -one against a guard unless they slide a protector, keep it back in the block. Good luck. Lewis Nix, he's the man mountain nose. 86 strength. tackling. Not much of a pass rusher. 92 block shedding. So you have 97 and 92 block shedding in the middle of your line. To go with Clowney. That's 87 block shedding and 94 power move, 85 finesse move. So good luck. And I have Brooks Reed playing the um, boundary defensive end. It could have gone a couple of ways here. You can even keep Watt here and put someone like, say, uh, Poe or Crick as your three defensive tackle. 81 power move for both, and they both can play their run very well. It's just, that, it's just that Watt is just so dominant at that spot that I keep him there. But you can go Watt at the um, boundary side defensive end if you wish. But I like to have Brooks Reed there. He's athletic, 81 speed. Not He's got borderline strength, 86 acceleration. Okay, awareness, good enough. He can tackle, he can hit hard. 82 power move, again, you know, borderline. You could go merciless here and sacrifice a little bit of block shedding. Um, or can go Crick here, either or. I like to have Brooks Reed because he is a little bit more athletic. And if you need to spy or drop him into a hook, he has a 62 zone coverage. If you need to take him out. What I like to do in the um, quarter or dollar is I like to put Watt there and put um, Crick at the nose to maximize my um, down three and three um, defensive line, three man defensive line sets. You can go either way here. If you're like me and playing online franchise or offline franchise, play Max Bullock and develop him. You have to win one game and don't want to risk some awareness gaffes or don't feel comfortable using him, play Akeem Dent. Because awareness is 55. But his play rec, oddly enough, is 75, so it's kind of weird. But he can zone cover at 70. He can really block shed. He's got 85 block shed. Good enough tackler at 76 and 80 hit power. Kind of borderline, but just good enough. And he's strong at 85, so he's going to maintain, he's going to hold that edge on the boundary side. And as a rule of thumb, I have my best run defender on that side, in that spot. And if he has the lowest zone coverage out of the three, that's fine. He's just going to have the less amount of room to cover. We can play Dent there as well. Kush. 
is, you know, pretty much your prototype as far as a middle linebacker spot. You know, your your uh, Patrick Willis, your uh, Keekleys. You can, you know, cause some damage on the times that you do have to blitz. Good block shatter. Really good block shatter. Good pursuit. Good play rec. 76 zone coverage. He's got everything that you want. Field side backer is Jeff Tarpinian. And again, you know, with these younger players and these role players are going to have awareness issues at times. So you may want to use him. He's 74. And 75 play rec. So you'll be fine with that. You won't, you won't do anything often. Mediocre block shedding, but he's going to be on a side that has um, Nix and Clowney there to protect him a little bit. And okay pursuit. Not great. But he's he is athletic. He can run. 83 speed. He's got to run on that open side. And he can zone cover at 72. That's what you got to have. Did I? Oh, that's right. Yeah, the bears are interesting. They have a lot of tweeners. They have a, they have some. They have a lot of guys who are just barely good enough on the defensive line to get it done. I mean, Jared Allen, he barely has enough gas in the tank to get it done with 86 overall, 74 speed, um, 84 acceleration, nice and aware. You know. Not the greatest run defender in the world. He's your pass rusher. 88 power move. You know, mid to high 80s is the absolute borderline for your best pass rusher. So he still has some gas in the tank. Really young. And according to Washington, when you go for DEs, if you wish, when you want to take uh, Paella and Ferguson out, Ego Ferguson and Paella, both of them are strong. Hard to move. Okay, pass rusher for Paella, but I'm really interested in their run defending. 88 and 85. And again, general rule of thumb you want your best combination of um, pass rush and run coverage playing the uh, one defensive tackle stop spot, which is going to be the three technique spot. I'll show you why that's so vital when I show you over and under. Briggs is the perfect boundary, quote-unquote, strong side backer for this scheme. He's lost a step or two, but he's strong. He's got good acceleration still. He's nice and aware. Can tackle. Can he really? And he's got that 84 block shedding. He's not going to be easy to move. And good pursuit. 91 play rec. His zone coverage has fallen off over the years. Remember the glory days of Urlacher and Briggs? Not quite at that level anymore. But again, he's going to be on the boundary side. He's not going to be asked to cover a lot of ground. And he's not going to be on the field in nickel and dime. He's my boundary side defensive end. Strong. Good acceleration. Decent speed for being, you know, as big as he is. Good tackling. 86 power move, poor line, 81 block shedding. You could go Cornelius Washington and have Houston play your three and Paella play your nose. You're going to lose a little bit of run defense on the edge, but you'll get you know, more athleticism out of Cornelius Washington than you would out of um, Lamar Houston. Washington's actually stronger, but not as good of a block shedder. It's a trade-off, you know? Slightly worse at block shedding, but he's stronger. Gives you the same pass rush move, but he's more athletic. DJ Williams. Not very stout, but he's athletic. He's not going to get off blocks very well, but he has, you know, some good defensive tackles to help him out. 87 pursuit, 84 play rec. Can man up occasionally. He does pretty well. 75 zone coverage is very good. And John Bosick. 
playing the open side backer, 83 speed. Awareness issues there. You may do some boneheaded things occasionally. You may want to use him from time to time if you feel comfortable using a linebacker. Generally, if you want to use a linebacker, I would leave the middle linebacker spot alone unless you're very disciplined in your drops. Otherwise, control either the boundary backer because you have the less amount of room to cover or the um, field side backer. And make sure that you're carrying vertical enough to, for it to be respected before you come out and peel back. 89 hit power. Good pursuit, average play recognition, 74 zone coverage. The secondary is where we start to have some issues when we get to the safeties and the nickel and dime corners. Well, Fuller is pretty good. The dime corner, I have freaking Ahmad Dixon there. Only because he's the most physical as far as being able to press. You can play some zone coverage and you can play press coverage the best out of what they have left. Tillman is nice and physical. If you don't want to play Tillman, you want to be a purist, you can go Fuller, uh, Jennings, uh, Dixon, Vereen. Safeties is a problem. This was the biggest problem for me playing with the Bears. Their deep safeties are an issue. I settle on Vereen only because if they're going to be mediocre, I might as well settle on the guy that tackles and hits harder. <laughs> that's, just the way my, that's just the way I personally like to play it. You can play some man coverage. His, his, his deep zone coverage is a little bit higher than McCray. Ryan Mundy. He can hit hard. Mediocre player recognition, okay pursuit, and, you know, mediocre deep zone coverage. That's the biggest problem with these Bears is in the deep coverage from the uh, secondary. Um, because, you know, Houston isn't, not Houston, but um, Jared Allen isn't quite in his prime if he's, you know, not getting home or you're not getting home with him if you're using him. Could be some issues. Let's talk about the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills is my sleeper Tampa 2 monster team so far. They have some pieces. Marcel Darius and Kyle Williams, they're the goods at defensive tackle. I put Marcel Darius at the three technique because he's a little bit more athletic. He's actually a little bit stronger. And at that spot, you're not going to lose much either way. You have 96 and 92 for your interior pass rush, and 91 and 94 for your block shedding, along with good pursuit and you know adequate awareness of player recognition. You're gonna do, you're gonna be just fine there. The open side defensive end is gonna be Jerry Hughes. He fits the prototype: 85 speed, 91 acceleration. You know, okay tackler, not a good run defender, but 93 finesse move. That's what you want. He's gotta be your screamer. And you have Manny Lawson, not Manny Lawson, Mario Williams on the other side, playing your uh, boundary end. Nice and strong, good, ath good athleticism, good acceleration. Okay, tackler, good hit power. 87 finesse move, which is, you know, okay. 76 block shedding, which is okay. He's not going to be hurt that much because of these two monsters and because dropping the hammer at that boundary side backer position is Brandon Spikes. Not very rangy, not very fast, but he's strong. He can accelerate, he's aware. And he'll thump you. 92 tackling, 95 hit power. 88 block shedding, pursuit is good, play is good. Zone coverage is the lowest out of the backers, but again, he's gonna be covering the least amount of space. And he's not gonna be on the field in the dime and the nickel. I'm gonna have Kiko playing the middle linebacker. It's a bit of an overall dip because of strength and his block shedding there, but again he has protection from the Man Mountains here, so you'll be okay. Good acceleration, good awareness, you'll catch the ball, 78 catching. 89 tackling, 80 hit power, good enough. Mediocre, but he's going to be helped. 
pursuit is 95, 93 play recognition. Can match up occasionally against some tight ends. 86 zone coverage. That's beautiful. That is wonderful. That's music to my ears and eyes. <laughs> and your open side backer. These two are pretty much interchangeable. Both of them are very fast. Can accelerate. I settled on Rivers because he has slightly better awareness. And a little bit better tackler. Not really. Um, Bradham has better tackling and hit power. I just like his awareness and player recognition better. And, you know, he has 70 zone coverage is good enough. What you can do is you can sub Bradham in in those must pass situations in the nickel for Rivers. So you have Alonzo with 83 and Bradham with 78 with a lot of speed covering those uh, middle hooks. Can't go wrong with that at all. And a secondary is solid. Good man coverage, good zone. Physical enough, again, with the coverage audibles, you can play press with these three and off or over the top with a Kelvin, and the safeties are decent enough. 76 is borderline, but it's good enough. I mean, you're not going to be too overwhelmed there. 85 is excellent. You know, not everyone has the same safeties. So you do the best what you have with what you have. The Cowboys. The Cowboys are an issue. Their secondary zone coverage is really poor. Mangridge is okay out of car. Zone coverage is awful, as you can see. Sean Lee, I love. He's one of my favorite players in the entire game. Nice and fast. Not the strongest guy in the world, but he doesn't need to be. Good awareness. 95 tackling, 83 hit power. Not the best block player in the world. 96 pursuit. 95 play rec. Good man coverage for middle linebacker, and again, that 84. So anytime you can find 80 and above, take it and run and be happy. The hammer. On the strong side, boundary side will be Orlando McLean. Good athlete, decent strength. And he gives you your best chance to, to um, play a good run defense on that side. And 70 zone coverage. The defensive line, the guys that can rush the passer can't play the run. The guys that can play the run can't rush the passer. Melton only has an 81 block shedding. But. He's got 93 power moves, so if you can get the guys in passing situations, you're going to do well. McLean, 
I put here so I can have some block shedding in there as well as some as well as some pass rush as well. And to take on those doubles. You know, he's got 92 strength. So I'm gonna go with him to take on those double teams. And to fight through them. And Milton to be my three. Anthony Spencer. Not a bad pass rusher at all. He's actually athletically comparable to Jared Allen. And his pass rush move is the same. He just can't play run defense whatsoever. 67 block shedding. If he can get off a block, he can pursue, but you can run right at him. And you can drop him into hook zones with 72 zone coverage. And Crawford's the same thing. So the thing with the Cowboys is to... If you're playing against the Cowboys, run at them. <laughs> he can't, you know, block shed very well. He's mediocre for my um, strong side or boundary side uh, defensive end. He's right on that borderline fringe, but he's got an he's got a okay pass rush move for uh, my um, other pass rusher, 87. Not bad. You know, similar to Lamar Houston, but just not quite as good overall. So the thing with the Cowboys, if you can stop the run and get them into pass rush situations, you better get there because more than likely someone deep is going to be open somewhere because the secondary coverage is not that good. So those are your um, Tampa 2 rosters, and I'm going to do another video, since this is going kind of long, talking about fronts, and take you through an online game with my defensive play calling with commentary. Peace.